it shouldn't be a religion. Fiat money favors the people that are already rich. There's much more to it than I than I initially thought, um, and it's not just an asset. It's much more than that. So. Only two percent of Bitcoin holders actually have a hardware wallet. It's, it's really never too late, and the best time is now, always. I even get into Bitcoin in the first place. Well, in the first place, um, it sort of happened by accident, I would say, because um, I was not into finances yet. I was It was in 2016, and someone suggested to invest into a project that at the time, I didn't know that it was a Ponzi scheme and it was a scam, but at the time I didn't know. So um, I trusted the person who suggested that, and you know the project had been running for a while, and it all looked good and stuff like that. And, but you, you, you could only pay with Bitcoin, right? So in 2016, I got myself, um, I bought Bitcoin on an exchange and, um, you know, I transferred. I, I bought Bitcoin and I transferred the money directly because the volatility was pretty high then. Um, so I was always eager to, to transfer the Bitcoin that I just bought as quickly as possible into this system that I believed was a good thing. So, uh, and I didn't understand any, anything about Bitcoin at the time. I just knew, okay, if I wanted to be part of this project, I needed to buy Bitcoin and send it there. So I did. And it didn't last very, it lasted for a year and a half, the project, you know, and I kept on buying Bitcoin and sending Bitcoin to the, into the system. Um, and then the whole thing imploded at some point in 2018 and I lost it all. And, um, you know, you, I can see all the transactions. And if I look at all the money that I, I sent through the system, right? If I just held all of the Bitcoin that I bought at the time in 2016 until 2018, wow, that would have been really interesting today, right? So, but I didn't. I lost it all. And, um, but the thing was, and that was the interesting part for me um, looking back at it, is that I did have Bitcoin on, a, on an exchange. I knew how to, to buy it. And um, in the meantime, I also studied stuff about finance and, and investments. And so um, still, I didn't understand Bitcoin at the time in 2018 either. Um, but I, I, I looked at it as an asset because I started investing in general. And uh, so I figured out, you know, it could be part of my portfolio. So I started investing in Bitcoin as such, as an asset. Um, I did not comprehend too much about it. Um, I just, and I also did, like at the time I played with altcoins and stuff. I did all kinds of stuff. Um, so, and then 2021, um, that was like an all time high at the time. Um, I took my, what I invested, I took it out because my portfolio was was like out of balance. So like in the sense of, you know, having like a balanced portfolio, uh, Bitcoin seemed to to be too high. So, <laughs> so I, you know, looking back at it today, it's like, oh, my God, why did you do that? But I did. Right. Because I didn't understand anything about Bitcoin at the time. Um, it was just an investment. It was just an asset. It was just, you know. And also it was a volatile investment and, you know, was, it felt like a high risk thing that I was doing. So I was trying to not, you know, be all in, you know, get, get all in into Bitcoin. So over time though, um, I, I started learning more about Bitcoin and it's, it's only at the end of 23 that I, I went to Innsbruck to the Bitcoin conference. That was my first Bitcoin conference that I attended. I was there as a photographer actually. And um, that was the first time I realized the community, you know, what the community stands for, what Bitcoin actually means. That was the first time I was really able to comprehend to some extent. I, I wouldn't say I comprehend Bitcoin like in depth. I wouldn't say that. Um, but I realized that this is, it's about freedom. It's about decentralized finance. It's about um something revolutionary actually that we, we never had before and uh, that the community is is about innovation about sustainability about all values that i that are important to me 
So um, at that point, I realized, okay, um, it's really there's much more to it than I than I initially thought, um, and it's not just an asset; it's much more than that. So yeah, since then, it's it's only uh, the end of last year. Since then, I'm like I'm down the ra the rabbit hole, <laughs> and uh, I gave up all like everything else that I was doing. Like I, you know, I, I think in 23, I still I was still holding some Ethereum, so I I changed all of that and uh, it's Bitcoin only now. So yeah. And um, yeah, that's it for, for, for now. <laughs> that, that, that's really interesting. Um, like, first of all, the, the spams and the scams that you mentioned in the beginning, I think it wasn't the same one. <laughs> Uh, I, I almost was in the same one. I did not actually enter, uh, which was which is surprising because I'm I'm really a, I'm always a person that believes like I'm believing in the good in people and trusting people a lot. Like I it takes a while, so I don't trust people. I, I initially always have to trust in people and not to don't trust people. And but for some reason it did not feel good uh, for me, so I did not get in. But I was at those meetings and I also talked with Nico Yilch, the the biggest German podcast, about that on his podcast when I was a guest. Um, and a lot of people went into the scams in this in the oh, spams. Yeah. Like a lot of people from 2016 to 2018, it was like you get in, you see all some maybe some friends in there. It always starts with like some older friend of yours comes to you and says like, "Oh, I have this business opportunity, this investment opportunity, something like that." You go on a coffee, there are like five more people. Um, then you have to lock up your, I think it was half a year or something like that. The money. I don't know if it's the same one, but it it, it sounds similar. Uh, and so many people were in this, and uh, yeah, it got, it got a, Bitcoin got a bad rap about uh, because of that. Because sure. then uh, they connected Bitcoin with actual pyramid scheme, with actual multi-level marketing schemes, which it is not. And then they're also like, I never talked about that on the podcast, uh, and I want to do it today. Um, there are so many scams out there. Like there are on Twitter. 200 other Robin Sires that are contacting all my followers and do uh, and want to uh, get them into some course, into some WhatsApp group, and something. Oh like, my God. I, I will never contact anyone to get into any group at all. And this is always a scam. I mean, I have a Telegram group for channel members, but this is like featured directly on YouTube on, on my channel with, with my community. That's the only thing that I'm offering because I want to get my channel members together and so they have a group they can exchange thoughts and stuff like that but even my cousin went into uh almost into a scam and my cousin is like 12 years old and oh. he uh got contacted by a scammer of mine in english and he's obviously from austria he doesn't know english that well and he exchanged with my scammer that used my profile picture and my name I like oh, 20 wow. messages and he was really almost like investing, but he has no money. So it was, it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was good in a sense. Uh, and uh, then he was writing me, Hey, on WhatsApp, Hey, why are you uh, talking to me in English? And I'm like, I'm, what are you saying? I'm not talking to you in English. <laughs> so like, even people that know you kind yeah. of, fall, because they're not stupid. They're, the, 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 those camps, if someone falls for that, um, they are doing it in a really intelligent way. So, uh, just like a public service announcement, there are a lot of scams out there. Be aware. Uh, see if the account that you are interacting with is actual the account that you think you are interacting with, and then consider even if it's the real account, this real account might be hacked. So it sure. might not be the actual person. I just want to get this out of the way. Um, but you said something uh, interesting that you did not understand um, Bitcoin at the time. Did you understand? money at the time because i think a lot of people even michael saylor said it um learn with bitcoin what money actually is and that's why a lot of people actually don't understand what bitcoin is true that was true for me too i didn't understand anything about money i wouldn't i don't think i would have gotten into the scam if i had some knowledge about money and how it works and stuff so i had no idea about nothing at the time right i i, I just didn't so I just trusted the guy. <laughs> so yeah, no, um, no. I mean that was a that that was a another journey for me to uh, to really t um, get into into the question of m what is money. And also here, I wouldn't say that I have like total in depth knowledge, but um, 
first of all, it, for me, it was a lot about mindset, about, you know, limiting beliefs um, around money, because I never dealt with money. You know, I was employed for most of my life, you know, raising the family, raising the kids, making sure everything is secure, blah, 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 the, you know, the, the normal stuff. And um, so I never, I, I never wanted to have anything to do with money, really. It was really, it's a very German thing. I don't know about the Austrians, but it's a, it's a very German thing, like limiting beliefs, like money is dirty and, the, you know, rich are the others and the rich ones are taking advantage of other people, blah, blah, blah. You know, all these, all these very limiting beliefs that we have as an individual and also as a culture, as a, as a society. So um, money is in Germany is not really looked at in a positive way. Uh, unlike in the in the US, for example, you know, it's, uh, you know, I have this example that um, when when you see like a f big car, like a Ferrari at the at the gas station in Germany, you know, people would be like envious in, and hide it and then just feel like this, is, this must be a weird person, you know, this month, he must have he must have ripped off people to get that kind of car. If you if you do that in the U.S., you know, people will come up to you and say, "Really nice car. How did you manage?" <laughs> so, so really, that's that's the that's one of the differences. And money is not bad as such, right? So here I, in Germany, I feel money is looked at as a bad thing, um, especially um, if you don't have it. <laughs> Uh, then you look at other people and you know feel like they're bad people because they have more or something. It's this envy thing is really strong in Germany. So yeah, looking into that and learning about my own limiting beliefs and learning how to how to deal with money differently and how to actually also you know learn about finances and learn how to what investment means um, and what if I do invest money what is important for me and learning that it has to do with values and that I cannot, I wouldn't be able to invest into something that doesn't comply with my values, for example. So, which is why Bitcoin, and at the end of the day, once I I understood more of it, is is something that really complies with my values, So what, which is why it has become more important in my life today. Do you think that when we are moving closer and closer to the Bitcoin standard, more people understand Bitcoin that because I think this, this belief that, that, oh, he has money, he has done something wrong, um, also might come from the fact that fiat money favors the people that are already rich, because when you have a lot of money, you can make more easily more money. Um, which is not as easy with Bitcoin because you uh, everything has a proof of work thing. Uh, with fiat, you basically have a yield. Like you, you, you can do a lot of things with fiat money. You get cheaper credits and all this stuff. Um, I mean, I believe that a credit system will always kind of exist. And also when you have a lot of Bitcoin, you probably also get a better credit, but not as uh, with, with the fiat system. And that's why I think a lot of these beliefs are coming from that we have this fiat system, you, they see something, uh, someone with a lot of money, and they directly go like there, oh, he has to done something wrong. He, he I don't know, he robbed someone. He d d does some dirty business, whatever he does, but it's probably wrong. Um, what most people don't think about, oh, he has probably done a lot of work in his life. Oh, he probably provided to a lot of people a lot of value. Why is Apple such a huge company? They provided everyone with the internet and the phone and, and with the, the laptops. Like They provided a lot of value to, to society. Obviously, they got rewarded a lot. Uh, but still, they provide a lot of value. Uh, and it, it's like when you have a lot of money, if you did not inherit it, if you did not win it in a lottery, uh, if you did not do anything like that, you probably worked really hard for that. And even if the people that win it in a the lottery, they usually have less money after like, what was it, five years, mm -hmm. something like that, uh, because they cannot handle it. So it's like there's a mindset thing to it. And the people that inherited probably keep the money, but not because of the capital, more because of the human capital, I feel like. Um, do you think this could change on a, on, a, on a Bitcoin standard when we have this proof of work mindset rather than, oh, he has money, he has done something wrong. More like, oh, he has money, he did some work. <laughs> 
Mm, that's a good question. I'm not quite sure because um, because to for 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 ha for being able to have having a Bitcoin standard. I mean, I think that's a long way to go. Actually, I don't think this is going to be that we're going to see this anytime soon. So um, and and the thing is, particularly in our societies like Austria, Germany, or Europe in general, I would say we don't have we don't have the problem yet. So we don't see yet that it's it could be a solution like people you know like kids in africa they they have a problem and they immediately understand what bitcoin means but they understand it immediately because they have this problem that they need to solve right because they don't have access to a bank account etc cetera, etc cetera. so we don't have a problem yet <laughs> at least not a problem that we feel or that that we can um, grasp you know, I mean, people talk about it that you know there's you know inflation and you know the financial system cannot go on working like that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but the, we don't have the problem yet, so we're not looking for a solution. So, and I think it's going to be a process, and in the process, I would like to believe that you know mindset and um, that that we will be able to change with that and grow with it as as we understand more and more. Um, but it's going to be a long way, I think. <laughs> Maybe to understand better what um, the difference might be in society, we, we, we could look at um, what you did not understand about money that you understand now about money. You mentioned that proof of work aspect that that you don't have these limited beliefs. Is there something else that that you learned uh, uh, about that, or is is, is that the, the major thing? I mean, again, also that's a that was a process and still is um, because I don't think that you have all of a sudden you have the epiphany and then you know you know you know everything and then that's it. So I don't think that's that's how life works. So um, it's still a process, and I still adjust to new. Um, realizations I have about money. There was a time when I first started out that I was sort of falling for, you know, this, um, you know, you just have to ask and it's, it'll be given. <laughs> you know, you just have to ask the universe and you just have to feel rich. And once you feel rich, then the money is going to come by itself. Um, I looked into that kind of stuff as well because it was, it was part of the process, right? So, but today I'm much more critical and and I do think that Bitcoin, different from all the other stuff that, that's available, that Bitcoin offers you, um, because of the proof of work aspect, it offers you a different experience, you know, with, uh, because if you, if, what do you do if you, if you want to invest, what options do you have, right? You can buy shares, you can buy funds, you can, you can, uh, that's not the right word, but you know what I mean. Um, you know, you can you can invest into companies. You can uh, do yeah. It's, it's basically, it's stocks. Like world, I don't know. <laughs> so, but um, but that doesn't it, that doesn't um, it gives you a, a, a certain possibility of of a, of a turn on, return on invest, but it doesn't really do anything for you. So with Bitcoin, I think it's different because you have to first of all. It's it's uh, it's about being responsible yourself. If you do all the other stuff, it's you don't have to be so responsible. Yeah, you buy an ETF, you and 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 so what? There's there's nothing much to it. But if you if you deal with Bitcoin, you have to be much more conscious about your decision, and you have to be responsible. Um, and uh, that's one of the main things that I think we don't have yet. We don't see yet. That people are really responsible for what, for their for their own decisions, and that's true for for like everything in life, but particularly with money and um, you know the choices you make. So I think that's really that's really important, and it does change the way you look at things if you have to really take responsibility. It's fascinating for me because I have a Bitcoin podcast and I, <laughs> before I have, <laughs> as, as everyone here knows, but <laughs> uh, before I even got into Bitcoin, I had a YouTube channel about stocks. I also oh. watch a lot of stocks, uh, um, YouTube channels and podcasts. And the m most significant difference is 
on a stock uh, podcast, you talk about stocks, about management teams, about what what stock will perform good, what stock will perform not good. On Bitcoin podcasts, you talk about everything. There is parenting in there. Uh, there, there is uh, so many nutrition stuff in there. There's sports in there. There's mindset in there. It's it's not like I think fifty percent of my uh, of the time that I talk with guests is not about Bitcoin at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I mean, there are podcasts where I only talk about Bitcoin. Uh, there are podcasts where I rarely talk about Bitcoin. Um, but it's like Bitcoin is that one financial asset where when there's a podcast about that, it goes way deeper than just the money part. And and this is oh. this is really fascinating. And believe it or not, I discovered that yesterday. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> no, I, I think that's 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 really important though, because uh, like this holistic approach that you have when you when you when you deal with Bitcoin, that it affects like it affects every area of your life if you really want to comprehend what what it is what it means and uh so yeah i'm i just booked my ticket to el salvador yesterday i'm gonna be in el salvador in november for at least two months and to, to like take a deeper dive into a community that already has a bitcoin standard. can you do you call it that a bitcoin standard yeah i guess so right not hey, not really thank you you already made it halfway through the video and i'm really really grateful to have you here two things make this channel possible you as a watcher and listener who keep supporting this channel and another one is all the bitcoin brands that i partner up with like 21 bitcoin who support me from the very start and where i personally buy my bitcoin from With code robin you even get a discount when you buy bitcoin with them and now also bitbox bitbox is the simplest and securest way to secure your bitcoin and i heard a crazy statistics only two percent of bitcoiners hold their bitcoin in a hardware wallet how crazy is that don't be in that 98 bracket be in the two percent bracket and if you have self-custody and you know your friend does not have maybe he needs a christmas present maybe he needs a birthday present and a small life hack if you use code robin you get five percent off your order plus you support my channel and now let's get back to the video it's it's uh i would say they are a bitcoin standard because the government is stacking bitcoin they are buying one bitcoin a day uh bitcoin is a legal tender there but legal tender does not mean that everyone accepts it they have like an acceptance rate of maybe 30 40 percent it depends on what right. era you're in Uh, in like big cities like San Salvador or Berlin uh, or, or Bitcoin Beach, of course, they are like almost everyone accepts Bitcoin and, and can transact in Bitcoin. Um, but it's unfortunately not that easy. Even if the president and the government wants it, it's like you cannot just switch and everyone then uses Bitcoin because you have to educate the people there. Yes. Uh, and that's what a lot of people are also now doing there. And uh, it's, it's a process. So, so are they... They're kind of on the process to getting the Bitcoin standard. Legally, they have it. They have a legal tender in Bitcoin. But most of the transactions, most of the things are still happening in dollars. Uh, even El Salvador, even though they buy one Bitcoin a day, only 4% of their reserves is in Bitcoin. So they mm -hmm. have a lot of dollar reserves. They have a lot of other reserves. Um, so it's, it's, I would not call it a full Bitcoin standard, but they are the best country on the way to Bitcoin standard, if we call it like that. Yeah. So I'm curious to find out, you know, um, what the spirit is over there, and and because I do believe that there's um, a lot of innovation happening, and uh, you know, like a, and that's that's one of the things um, that actually relates to what you were saying before in terms of Bitcoin not just being a financial asset or an asset as such, but that it affects like in a holistic way, a lot of areas of your life. Um, I think that's that's one of the most important things that. To, to comprehend that it's a process where you learn about yourself, you learn about a community, you learn about what's possible. And it's it's so new. I mean, it's only 15 years old. So nobody really knows where this is going to take us. Um, we, you know, most of us feel or think that we, we see the potential or the possibilities, but I don't think we can actually grasp all of it yet because We don't know where the process will lead us, um, and it's a it's a it's an amazing it's an amazing opportunity, 
And I hope we don't mess it up because if, you know, if anyone, if anyone can mess it up, it's the humans. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, but I'm really curious. And this is, I guess, what my journey with Bitcoin is. You know, I'm, I'm in general, I'm very curious and I look into different things all the time, trying to, you know, get new perspectives. But in this case, it just it just opens up so many new aspects that you, we didn't have before. You know, it didn't exist. So it definitely does. I even have um, uh, yesterday I had some of El Salvador again on. I have done around 10 interviews with people from El Salvador or mm -hmm. people that have been moving to El Salvador, probably like even 15. Uh, I, and I promised her to make a playlist on my channel with all the El Salvadoran uh, interviews uh, because they, they're getting a lot. <laughs> and I think that's a, it's, it's a great way to get into uh, what's happening in El Salvador. Like every interview, and I interviewed so many different people there, you get such a great feeling of what's actually happening there, um, how the adoption is actually progressing. And I also want to go to El Salvador. I actually also plan to go in November. I've not uh, I bought my tickets, but maybe we see each other in, in November then in El Salvador. It would, it be, would, nice. be, would be amazing. You want to come for the conference? Yes, uh, like this is my plan. Like if I go to El Salvador, I want to be there longer than just the conference, but I definitely want to see the conference. Um, I don't know about two months, but I could imagine like one month uh, being mm -hmm. there because the flight is also long, like everything under two weeks, I feel like is, is not worth the, the long flights yeah, yeah. Uh, from, from Austria or even also from Germany. Um, so I really want to go there and want to experience what, what life is all about in the, the closest thing we have to Bitcoin standard. I mean, Nigeria is also, I think Nigeria has actually the highest grassroots movement of, of, of Bitcoin. It uh, would also be interesting to, to check that out because mm -hmm. there the government has not adopted it, but the people need it so much that they yeah. from themselves uh, adopted it that much. Um, but yeah, El Salvador itself also had a really big need to know about Bitcoin. Uh, that's why they adopted it. Um, but you, you also brought up a really interesting point about self-responsibility. You also had to learn about self-custody, right? Yes. So that how was that how was that process of 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 getting uh, something completely new? Because I see a lot of Bitcoin that don't do it. Like I have I have friends who are twenty four, completely tax savvy. They're doing all the things, and and they're like, what? Why should I buy a, a self custody hardware wallet? Like, and I saw also the statistics: only two percent of Bitcoin holders actually have a hardware wallet. It's still on exchanges, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that, that changed for me when I was in Innsbruck, when, you know, when I was listening to all of these people uh, at the Bitcoin conference. So, um, yeah, and, and I'm also, you know, I'm part of the Les Femmes Orange. Um, you probably heard of them. That's a bit, you know, Rachel Geyer and uh, some other women, Nicole, Nicole uh, Novak from Bitcoin Kurz erklärt. They, they founded uh, Les Femmes Orange, which, which is a Bitcoin education platform by women for women. So we have like lots of meetups and, and we, you know, you can, you can just learn there how to install, for example, a Bitbox or something, you know, how to, how to, how to do it properly. <laughs> yeah. But it's not that difficult. I mean, it's just, it's like with everything, um, before I started dealing with finances, um, the whole idea of having to learn about money and finances and investment and, and, and later Bitcoin felt like such a big thing, such a complex, difficult, complicated thing. And it's not, if you take it a step at a time, it's just not so. Um, but that's what, what um, is being, I mean, we are not being taught about this at all in school or anywhere. So, and, and even our society is not supportive. It's changing now, but my, my kids are like 27 and 29. So I, there's, some things change, but a lot of things haven't really changed that much in terms of the the money mindset and you know how you you know you just go work, you have your salary, and then you know if you're lucky, you do like a like a what, what's a spa plan in English? Uh, you do a Sa savings plan. Yeah, savings plan. Like you know, a, a small portion of your salary goes into a ETF savings plan or something. <laughs> so, 
but nobody really is consciously making decisions and really being responsible. That's, I don't think that has changed so much. I sometimes wonder where, if, if, if because I see like people that are now in Bitcoin, they got influenced usually not by, as yourself, not by Bitcoin itself, more by the environment they're in then, because they mm -hmm. go to the Bitcoin conferences, they go to the people. So it's more like the people inside of Bitcoin then influence the newcomers uh, coming into Bitcoin. And I got really educated by Bitcoin Twitter because I wanted to get involved in the conversation on, on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, and I made just five tweets a day, like every day I made five tweets and joined the conversation that way. And uh, sometimes we put something out and people are like, oh, that's so wrong. That's so wrong. Here are like five articles to re uh, read about why you are wrong. Uh, because <laughs> Twitter, you, they, they, they can be really harsh to you, but it's, it's good. Oh, yeah. and, like I really got the toxicity of, uh, of Bitcoin Twitter. But for me, yeah. it was good uh, because it kind of... Um, put me in the right direction in terms of like what uh, what resources to look in, even though I would not consider myself toxic. I, I'm just like, if, if, for example, like altcoins, I think they will all go to zero, but I don't have to scream on them. Like they, they can just live. Like if, if Bitcoin is successful, like why should we scream against them? Um, even though I would never con uh, recommend everyone, anyone to, to buy in them. But also interesting, um, uh, Nicole was already uh, on the podcast and Rachel mm -hmm. already is scheduled, so that she will also be really soon on there. Maybe I have to make also Les Femmes Orange uh, playlist at some point. Yeah, Les Femmes Orange, yes. Oh, yeah, you should. Yeah. Um, to, to this topic, because we talked about that a little bit before the podcast, and I told you my statistics that like I went from 97% male uh, viewers to 92% male viewers that the biggest uh, female podcast, uh, Natalie Brunel has like 20% female viewers. I think it was like two, three months ago, it should be around that uh, even now. Um, how can we inspire, like, first of all, what, why do you think that is? Uh, what do you think is like, is, is it just because money and tech is, is not that female dominated so therefore bitcoin is also not uh, or like where does this come from and will this ever change will this ever change i don't know i think it is changing um but it's really slow you know i mean i've been around for a while so, you know when i was um in my early 20s you know feminism was a big thing you know that was in the 80s and and nothing much came of it i mean i don't want to go in go really into that topic but my experience is it's just it's just my experience especially with money and 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 then of course bitcoin that and tech has to do with that um i mean the, the fact that bitcoin is like a seems to be a technical thing you know and understanding the blockchain and stuff so so that's something that um women women do things differently and they um Interesting enough, when they do invest, they're, be they're better than men. That The statistics are clear about that, that women are better investors. They, ha they have better results when they, if they do it, you know. But, I mean, the, ma the majority is, is just, we are just trained in a different way. We're conditioned in a different way. That's really the reality of it still. We still are. So, um, because men, you know, as guys have to be the provider. I mean, this is cliche, but it's still true. Right, so you're trained to make money, to buy a house, and to be the provider. As women, we are not trained that way. We are trained to not to be too loud and not to, you know, be nice and smile and 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 you know, find a provider. <laughs> I, I know that sounds really simplistic, but there's a, there's still a truth in there. So that's how we are being conditioned when we grow up. Still, so I think that's part of it. Um, and I think it needs to change, and and that's what I'm. That's really part of my mission as well as a as a private Bitcoiner person, you know, because I inspire women that you know I encounter everywhere I go, and I do talk about Bitcoin without trying to convince anyone because it's really your own decision, and you really have to come to a point where where you're responsible yourself, and you don't do something just because I you know I tell you it's a good idea. So I think that's really important. Um, and you mentioned something else um, just before that question, which I think is really important because you were talking about toxicity in, you know, on the Twitter uh, 
on your Twitter exchange. One thing that I think is really important is that as Bitcoiners, it, it shouldn't be a religion. And I do know that some there are some enthusiasts out there who where it feels like they're treating it like a religion, right? Um, but I think that's always dangerous because it shouldn't be a dogma, it shouldn't be a religion, it should just, you know, so it should serve all of us. And as a community, um, I think it's important that we grow together and that it's, you know, it's, it's for our all, all of our benefits and not like this is the only way. I, I, I think I just needed to mention that because I think that's really important too. And we have to acknowledge that Bitcoin is a tool, uh, a tool yeah. in our tools that, that we can use. And not there. There are two, two two sides in my in my heart right now because it's just a tool. It's just money in the end of the day. And but because it's so revolutionary and because it could change, we don't know if, if it actually will change a lot. But we see the early things already when we go to Bitcoin meetings, Bitcoin conferences. We see the the early things that Bitcoin could change. That's why a lot of people. I think think so religiously because they discover with Bitcoin a different world because they discover mm -hmm. different people. But I think this effect will slow down because when we're not early and the crowd just gets so much bigger, um, this effect will uh, vanish a little bit and then Bitcoin will be just money and will be just the best store of value that you possibly can have. And that's amazing thing. Like that's that in itself is amazing thing. And and people fall in love with their cars. People fall in love with 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 everything. So like, um, it's no wonder that Bitcoin. Like people also fall in love with with, with Bitcoin and, and treat it as like a religion. Um, so I try to just treat it as a tool. But I'm someone that talks about it every day. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, it's 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 interesting for me and. I also said on the podcast, uh, when, when Bitcoin gets boring for me and it will be boring at some point, it's, it's kind of, I, I, I see this as like, uh, the early internet. There were in the early internet, a lot of conferences about protocols, about technologies. Um, they evolved a lot. Uh, like there are no, there's not the internet conference of the world. They are, they are now, uh, more segmented things that are on top of the internet as conferences. And at this, I also see in Bitcoin. We have not Bitcoin conferences because we're early and we're small. But as Bitcoin actually grows in the whole world, and let's say, let's just assume now Bitcoin is like adopted 90%. Um, who wants to talk about Bitcoin? Because it's such a no-brainer. Like everyone has it. Like it's 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 like email communications or like the, the HTTP protocol of the internet. Like who, who would go to a conference or go to a podcast and talk about that? But there might be topics on top of Bitcoin that might be interesting because we have built a new layer of free technology that revolutionizes how we pay in the store on Bitcoin. I don't know. Um, but uh, Bitcoin will change over, over time and it will be boring at some point. And also this podcast will... Uh, that's why I actually, because when I started it, I, it was called the Bitcoin Path. And now it's just the Robin Sire podcast because I'm aware that maybe in 20 years, Bitcoin is boring and then I don't want to rename it. I just like slowly uh, get in a different topic because uh, then my viewers are usually all, probably also not interested in, in Bitcoin anymore when I'm not interested anymore. But this was a long uh, talking point and I don't even know what, what my point really was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. But it's uh, it's an it's an interesting uh, uh, thought experiment. I feel like um, well, we started yeah for the for the last bit we started out with you know why women are not uh, represented oh, um, yeah. in 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 the same way. So um, and for me it's not so important why that is. Um, it's more important to actually invite you know invite women to. Um, to deal with it, study Bitcoin. It's not as complicated, you know. It's 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 little steps that you can take. There's so much material out there to actually, uh, you know, learn. And uh, Nicole's podcast is a good start. If if you are a total newbie, Nicole's podcast for German-speaking audience is a, is a good start. 
and there's of course much more much more and also you know go to meetups and and um, and and just connect with people because that's the other thing that's so important I find about Bitcoin is connecting with the community and co connecting with people and it's a gro it's a growing community so it'll it's it's and yes in 10 years from now it's probably not about Bitcoin events anymore <laughs> it, it you know it'll be different because it'll be already established in a, in a very different way um, so yeah but the invitation is really and doesn't matter uh, how old you are I mean I'm a good example um, it doesn't matter you know you just you just start and and uh, and and you can take the path in, in your own individual way and you can you know take your steps how you how you need to do them and it's it might be different for for each person what do you Find think someone this, who knows more than you do that, that that's what i always try to do with my podcast <laughs> find people smarter than me so uh, i have uh, better content on my podcast even though i'm not <laughs> as smart <laughs> yeah you know what they say right if you're the smartest in the room you're in the wrong room yes that that is um i have a question for you because you said uh that you're older what do you think is the, the average age uh, of my viewers on this uh, channel? I have no idea. The average age of your viewers, I would, I would assume that um, probably between thirty and forty, I would say. But you, you, you know, right? So I know exactly, yeah, um, because YouTube gives me this data, which is freakingly hard to know all that stuff, but. <laughs> Uh, I have under 25, uh, I have only 8% of the viewers mm -hmm. uh, and over 65, I have no over That's 50, <laughs> <laughs> over 65, I have the same amount of viewers than under 25, Okay, which is fascinating. And the average and the, the bracket where the most people are is between 35 and 44. See? So Good the... Guess. The, the average is, I think, around 40, I would say. Okay. Uh, so if I actually s see the average, it's probably like 40 years old. And uh, it's really interesting that I have double as many viewers above 55 than under 25. <laughs> but it doesn't surprise me, though. It doesn't surprise me at all. Because I think maybe, man, that's, that's an assumption I'm making, but I think that you need to have... Like a little bit of wisdom already, um, like a little bit of life experience or something, to be able to comprehend what this might mean. I mean, yeah, I think so. Absolutely, yeah. And I also see the the difference between long form videos and short form. It's, it's it interesting. Uh, I see the difference between long form videos and short form videos. Mm -hmm. uh, short forms are male only eighty eight percent. Uh, so mm -hmm. way better there, and the viewership is way younger. But yeah, uh, it's it's uh, it's interesting. Yeah. But yeah, um, uh, enough of my uh, podcast statistics. <laughs> Sorry for that. Interesting. I <laughs> uh, just want to give uh, viewers sometimes a little bit of insights. Um, one last question, one last Bitcoin question before we get to the end routine and other questions. Um, why? Did you first gamble with, or let's gamble, invest in, in altcoins? And what made you then change your mind back to Bitcoin? Uh, well, initially, uh, when I started investing, because I was looking at all of what I was doing as an asset. And, uh, and part of my portfolio was like gambling. And I didn't know I was a gambler, but I have this, this aspect of, you know, like having a high risk profile, actually. So I didn't know that before, and and that was gambling, and and I of course I gambled with the goal to make a high return on invest. It didn't work out at all. <laughs> so there, there's this German, there's this German. Actually, she's already dead, but there was this German lady that was into stocks, um, Beate Zander, and uh, she said that you have to avoid. I, and I only know that in German though. Vermeide die gefährlichen vier, Panik, Angst, Euphorie und Gier. When you deal with money, investment and stuff. You know, uh, greed is something that is a very bad advisor, just like fear. And uh, so, but at the time, 
you know, I was gambling and, and greed was definitely my ingredient to gamble because I felt like, oh my God, you know, it's just like the scam I was in. The reason why I lost a substantial amount of money was that I felt, okay, if I put in like a, a substantial amount now and then in three months I can take it out and then, you know, I, you know I'll, I'll be rich kind of thing. And it totally backfired. And, uh, you know, that was exactly the time when it, the whole thing imploded. So altcoins for me was really gambling and some, some greed. And that's today, I, I think very differently about investments and about money and about, uh, yeah. So, so it's, it's, not, it's not about the return on invest. Yeah, and, and, and Bitcoin and the Bitcoin community teaches you that. Yeah. And there, there is no yield and uh, you you should just stay hodl and stack sets. Um, you also made a, a picture of, of, of me in, in, in Bitcoin Prague. Um, are are you did. doing that uh, professionally or like uh, what I am, are yes. you doing? Yeah. Actually, I am, yeah. After, after my corporate time, I mean, I've always been a photographer. I did that like on the side as a side hustle for a long time. But once I uh, stepped out of the corporate world, when my kids were grown up, uh, I started as a professional photographer like 10, 15 years ago. So, yeah. Really cool. It was a nice picture. I just posted it, I think, uh, five, 10 minutes before we get on in the, uh, oh, in the, in the podcast. Okay. <laughs> uh, I also was not finding your uh, Twitter handle. But someone else oh, was. Oh, uh, passion. My yeah, Twitter handle is Satoshi passion. Uh, someone uh, immediately after like one two minutes commented, "Oh, that's uh, Satoshi passion." Oh, nice. And, and then I <laughs> uh, then I added it in. So uh, this was really quick. I think it was Chris from Cedar. Um, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he said to you that you're making the best photos in whole Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's Perfect. one of my, really one of my passions. Um, and uh, it's one of the things I really like doing, yeah. Perfect. And let's come to the end routine. End routine is uh, existing as two uh, questions. The one question is always the same, even though I changed it a little bit uh, a few podcasts before. And the other one is um, the end routine where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest. The first question that is always, oh. a, uh, the question that's always the same is, what can we learn from you besides Bitcoin? Oh, wow. Stay curious and really find your own path. It doesn't matter whether it's with Bitcoin or without Bitcoin. It's really about, and I would, of course, you know, the invitation is to look at it, study it, and then you can make a decision. But if you don't know anything about it, you can't make a decision. It's never too late. I think that's something that you can learn from me too. It's it's really never too late. And um the best time is now, always. Mm, I love that. Um, the end routine where the previous guest asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. Um, and the question for you is, tell us, it's it's not a question, it's more like a command, but <laughs> t t tell us a random f fun fact about yourself. A random fun fact. The, the, the first thing that comes to my mind is that I, I, I'm a photographer and I have like big... Ooh, do you hear that? Is it is it twelve? <laughs> it's the yeah, it's the fire the fire alarm going on. I can't do anything about it. Is it no. loud? It's, it's okay. I feel like it's uh... okay. Uh, so um, have you know lots of equipment, but one of my favorite things that I do is taking pictures with my phone when I pass by somewhere. So I have a whole series. It's pretty random because I do it randomly and uh, the best camera you have is always the one that you carry with you. So um, it's always the best one. And so I take, I, I have a, a whole series of pictures where I just pass by somewhere and I see something and, it, and I take a shot just passing by. So very random. Really cool. Thank you. Um, before I let you go, where can people find you? I didn't hear that because it's, I still have the fire alarm here. <laughs> okay, I will, I will, I'll try it again. Uh, where can people find you? Where can people ask you questions like, is Twitter, LinkedIn, where's the best uh, Yeah, place Twitter is Satoshi Passion, actually. And then LinkedIn, of course, my name, Sabine Schulte. Um, that's the best place, really, because you, you find everything that I do. And I do lots of different things. Um, so LinkedIn would be a good place. And other than that, my 
my portfolio with my pictures is on on Instagram. I it's flow photography, and uh, yeah. But if you're on LinkedIn, you find me, and then you find everything else. Perfect. Then yeah, thank you for uh, being on Sabine, and thank you also for everyone joining us today. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.